All right, folks, so today I wanna to talk about the number one question, by far the number one question that I get over on Facebook and on Instagram with regards, these are uh, custom camo versions of, of cry uniforms. Uh, this is, as I say, by far the most common question I get asked. It's not even close, like the second question is, you know, it's like this. And um, I've said I would talk about it and tell people how to get them. So let's do that. We're going to roll straight into how much do they cost? Because realistically, that's probably what most people want to know. Um, for the combat set, for the combat shirts, you're looking at about 90 euros. For the combat pants, the trousers, about 120 euros. That's for the standard, more common colors of camouflage without any special mods. If you want rarer fabric, uh, extra stuff, you, it might add 20, 30 euros tops, something in that region. I say euros because the guy who makes them uh, is in the Ukraine. And that's uh, the currency he asks to be paid in. So, yeah. Uh, now, I know for you folks watching the States, that's probably not as good of a deal, especially when you take into account the secondhand market for legit cries. Uh, however, over here in Europe, like certainly in the UK, and I think it's even worse in mainland Europe when you do the conversion, but in the UK, a set of Cry G3 combat uh, trousers, the trousers will run you 300 quid. So 120 euros is about 110 pounds. So it's about a third the price for these. So for us here, compared to buying locally, they're actually really cheap. Now, the guy is called Roman Kermaz. Kermaz, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. I don't know if that's his actual name. I don't know much about the Ukraine, but there's three main things he does. He started off doing replicas of Linderhof Tactic Gear, which is a German company, and he started off doing replica Gen 2 AC cries in Flecton. And obviously he got a process going. I think he runs a small shop. I don't think it's a one-man band. Uh, he got a process going for making those. And then he thought, well, I can just put other fabric into that process and make anything and that's taken off and it's been pretty popular and there's a there's quite a demand for these things there's quite a back order quite a waiting list to get them so we'll talk about that when you order them this is not like buying something from a shop where they're in stock these are made from scratch he's literally got rolls of fabric and sewing machines and they are made from scratch out of raw materials and you are looking at about two months realistically from ordering and paying to dispatch. Then you are looking at, in the UK, about two weeks uh, for the uh, package to arrive with you in the US, probably a little bit longer. So you need to be patient. Uh, there is a pinned post on his Facebook group uh, that tells you the rules of how to order and stuff. And basically you just pay your money and you've got to wait. If you're not good uh, at being patient, uh, this isn't a road for you to go down, really. Um, if I know a lot of people out there will, they pretty much only have one set of kit. And if they want to change, they'll sell, say, their, their current uniforms to buy the new camo and use that money. And, you know, that, that, that's fine. But if that is your system, these, again, probably might not work for you. Probably not the best way, depending on, you know, what you need your stuff for what you need your uniforms for if you have a set of cry g3s or whatever so again you need to have patience with these and if you can't wait three months for a uniform then don't order them because he'll just get annoyed with you if you keep messaging him and asking where are they are they made yet blah 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 so yeah be patient the next thing you need to know if you're going to order some of these is to be specific very very specific because, and I give this advice to anyone who's going to buy any sort of custom gear, chest rigs, pouches, you know, there are people who sew this stuff, uniforms, mods, et cetera, et cetera. You need to be very clear about every little detail because the person at the other end is not a mind reader. And what will happen is you've got an image in your head of what you want the thing to look like, but they don't have that same image. So you need to be specific. If you want, say on this combat shirt, by default, he does them with green Velcro and green thread, etc., on this uh, Rhodesian or Zimbabwean pattern. But I didn't want that. 
So you need to say, if you want tan Velcro, you need to say, I want tan Velcro. I want tan colored stitching. I want tan, you know, tan colored thread to be used in the stitching. I want a tan colored zip. I want full fields of Velcro on a G3 shirt, for example, because this is a G3 cut, but I think the split Velcro that Cry do is, is just crap. And if you look at the G4s, they're going back to solid fields. So it would tend to seem to me that they also agree. So yeah, if you want full Velcro, if you want it in tan instead of green or green instead of black, depending on the camo or gray or blue or whatever the hell you want, you need to say that. You need to say the zip, the stitching, uh, you know, do you want, what kind of elbow pad pocket, pockets do you want? On the pants, there's even more details, you know. Uh, do you want standard G3 or do you, uh, do you want like the calf pockets taken off like I've had on these to make them a little bit lighter or and simpler or, or whatever? Uh, what color stretch fabric do you want? It's those little details when it comes to the ancillary parts of the item. So as I say, like the thread color, the Velcro color, uh, the, the torso fabric, for, for instance, on a combat shirt, that's a big one. Um, this Rhodesian pattern has a lot of brown, green and tan. So is the area you're going to be in more suited to like a green torso? Well, you've got to say, because if you don't say and then you don't get what you want, whose fault is it? It's your fault. So again, be patient, be specific when you order. If you can do those two things, all should be good. Now, how do you actually order these? And I'm saying this after talking about the other stuff because you need to know that other information first before you actually go in and plow in there and order stuff. There is a link down in the description box with a Facebook group. So you need to be on Facebook to order these or have a mate who's on Facebook because you need to directly message Roman uh, via that group. As I say, Roman Kermaz is his name. Very... Uh, a name that sticks out so you won't miss it when you scroll through the group he does most of the posting in that group join the group direct message him don't comment on the things asking if he has blah 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 all he'll do is tell you to direct message him so don't comment and expect answers just message him directly and say i want this in this color with these details uh and have your cash ready simple as that don't muck him about because uh, he's not one for time wasters, I'll tell you that. Uh, he, I dread to think how many messages he gets per day and I can empathize with that, honestly. The main things he does, as I say, in terms of these uniforms, we've got G3 field shirts, AC or G3 combat pants, and AC or G3 combat shirts. He also does um, shorts, like cry shorts, which I haven't got any of here, um, but they're pretty interesting. He can do, um, he can do short sleeve shirts. Uh, he can do like flannel, Hawaiian, all sorts of camos. He can't get any camo that your little brain can fabricate up out of nowhere. Um, he can get a lot of stuff. Anything that's you know common, he can probably get it. But don't message him like, oh, I want this prototype that the Danish made once in 1924 and they made one set of it, set of it and I want cries made in that pattern, it's not gonna happen. If no one's making that fabric, he's not gonna be able to do it. Simple as that. He doesn't have any magical sources for stuff. Occasionally he'll get in rarer things than the norm, than just normal multicam tropic or whatever. Uh, like this, this Zimbabwean fabric, uh, he's only had in for a couple of batches, a couple of runs. Um, the, the Desert Knight, which I'd imagine a lot of people are wondering about, these are made of cut up parkas, the issue big long fishtail parkas from the 1990s. Luckily they're massive, so there's enough fabric in them that he can cut them up and make them into that. But if you want Desert Knight, because he's got to buy those parkas in instead of just raw fabric, it's going to be expensive because he's got to buy in the parkas and then chop them up. Now the, the wiser ones amongst you will be wondering how well are these things made uh, given the price is a lot lower than Christ? A thing I've read a lot of times in Roman's group is people saying, oh yeah, these are, these are better than Cry quality or these are exactly the same as Cry and objectively they are not. That's demonstrably not the case. So what we're gonna do now is move the camera around. And I'm gonna show you some close-ups of this stuff versus some legit Cry's and show you the differences and what's similar. Okay, so I have grabbed 
this uh, Mexican marine camo stuff here that I had from Roman because the stitching's nice and contrast color against the uh, fabric. And then we've got some cries here that I got directly from the cry website in Multicam Arid um, a little while back. I'm gonna do a bit of a comparison here. Fabric wise, it's gonna depend on the camo that you choose from Roman. Like he can't get stuff just magically made out of nowhere. The minimum order quantities on camo fabric are insane. You're talking thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of yards you have to order from a printer to get them printed on military poly cotton or nylon cotton blend fabric. So whatever there is on the market, that's what you're gonna get when you order from him. If there's good, like Nyko, like Cry use, that's what you can get. If there's only like old parkers that he has to chop up um, for the desert night, then that's what you're gonna get. So fabric will vary depending on the camo you choose. But generally it's all, it's all pretty decent stuff. Uh, for any sort of recreational user, you'll be fine. Stitching. When I say these are objectively not as good as Cry's, stitching's where's the difference is. On the Roman stuff, stitches per inch are about eight, which is uh, on the lower end, it's, it's about the absolute bare minimum, I'd say, for any like serious military police use. Um, Cry, do about 10 to 12. I'm not sure if you'll pick it up with detail on the camera, but uh, it's quite obvious to the eye that all the stitches are way closer together on the Cry's, where they're more spread out and less frequent on the Roman stuff. And if you're thinking, oh, that's nerd shit, it doesn't matter, well, think again, because there are literally hundreds of stitch joins on a set of these G3 combat pants, and every single stitch join is a potential failure point. Fabric almost you know, never rips, it's always stitches that go. So stitching matters. And the stitches per inch dictate pretty much how strong it is. More higher stitch per inch, stronger the stitch line is. So as I say, eight versus about 12 on the cries. So, you know, that's a 50% increase from the Roman to the cry stuff. Another big one, and I'll, uh, I'll roll in a, a B shot close up, but essentially, if you look at the corners of pockets and stuff like that, what Roman does is uh, where Cry does a bar tack, he'll just go over things two or three times. Uh, Cry in these areas that need the strength, they do a bar tack. So again, this is reinforced in those areas that want reinforcing, but not as strongly as the Cry's are. It's just a fact. So again, these people that say that the Roman stuff is as good or better, no, you're simply wrong. Stretch fabrics, the stuff, Roman can get stuff that's pretty much, I, I think it's identical to what Cry uses, but you need to ask him, he can't get all the colors and uh, it'll cost you a bit extra. Generally, the stuff he uses is a little bit thinner. To me, it doesn't seem as tough. I haven't got any long-term testing on that to see how abrasion resistant it is. Uh, on how resistant to tears it is compared to the uh, the tweeve, the uh, nylon stuff that Cry use. But generally, um, the Roman stuff is thinner. If you want the tougher stuff for a more serious usage or you want that tougher fabric in general, message him when you're ordering and ask for the tougher fabric. Negatives aside, however, overall, the Roman stuff's pretty good considering what you're getting. You're paying not much money, all things considered, for something that is scratch-built, custom, one-off for you. And that's a rare thing. There aren't many companies out there who will do that, and definitely not for these prices. The knee pad pockets for the uh, Cry knee pads, never had any issues with these. They fit nicely. The stretch panels are all in the right place, like these G3s. They've got the crotch, they've got the, the knee pads, they've got it on the lower back. Um, Roman uses these sort of like preformed, it's like the Velcro is like built into the rubber, and whereas Cry use something that's along the lines of Hyperlon. Um, slightly different, but honestly the Roman stuff is probably stronger in that regard. The Roman zips are standard type, whereas the Cry ones are inverted, which is slightly better. That's a minor detail though. They're both coil type zips, both good. All the loop, all the hook and loop on the Roman stuff, it's all good, legit materials, proper Velcro brand. Um, same as Cry use, I would say. Uh, certainly from appearance, it appears to be the exact same stuff. I'm not sure exactly what kind of thread he uses, but I'm pretty sure it's up to the job. I think it's good synthetic thread. 
even if the stitch bridge count is a little bit lower. Um, all the pockets, everything works. Like um, a big, big detail that I always notice and I'm impressed by is that if you turn these, turn any pocket in a cry combat uh, pant inside out, or the fields, in fact, what you've got here is edging tape reinforcing the pocket edges and you'll see it here on the Roman stuff and here it is on the Cry G3 knee pad adjustments down in these pockets here we got got good quality bungee cord you got a cord lock barrel lock in the exact same place same stuff um, Roman uses a bit of paracord sheath on here Cry use edging tape uh, absolutely no difference in strength not that it really matters because it's inside a pocket anyway and again, all of the pockets on the Roman stuff have that edging tape reinforcement. And all of the places on the cries that have bar tacks, they do at least have double or triple stitching on the Roman stuff. So it's not as good as bar tacks, but it's pretty damn close in fairness. I think that covers the majority of the points you'll need to know. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Um, if you get any of this stuff ordered from Roman and you can get it through, uh, let me know. Let me know how it does for you. Um, show me some pictures of, uh, of what you get. It's always interesting. He does all sorts of camos. Um, and I think for what you, what you get, the price is extremely good. It, doubly so when you factor in the, the fact that you're getting custom one-offs, single batch just for you in your own choice of uh, camo, etc. So that's enough of that. Uh, enough of me talking for now, folks. As I say, questions down in the comments. Cheers for watching. I'll see you next time.